Okay, let's go ahead and tackle this problem. Of course, I'm going to solve this precisely, exactly, in just one second. But uh, I'd like you to go ahead and think about how you would tackle this problem. Can you solve this problem? I'm saying down here that 10% of you can actually solve this. So that's a kind of pretty low percentage. And this is a fairly difficult problem for those of you out there that might be like in an Algebra 1, Algebra 2, maybe pre-calculus, college algebra type of course. Even the best of students are going to have to kind of think about what to do here. So uh, again, not a super easy problem, more on the difficult side for sure. But let me give you a little bit of a hint, okay? So the first thing is we're dealing with these square root symbols. These are called radicals. So what we have here is a radical equation, okay? And when you're solving radical equations, there's these big picture concepts that we have to keep in mind. And there are certain steps that we uh, oftentimes need to do in radical equations that uh, kind of bring up these other issues. So this is a multi-layer uh, problem. So there's no way you're going to be able to get this problem correct without knowing a lot about algebra. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and challenge yourself, pause the video, see what you come up with, and uh, put your answers in the comments section. I think that would be a great way to make use of this video. But I'm going to get it into ex I'm going to get into exactly what to do here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But very uh, quickly, I have about 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school level, high school level, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you out in your course. If you're taking any exam that has math on it, so for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACE, or CLEP exam, ALEX exam, teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam, and many others, you get the idea. There's often this little pesky math section that's on these exams that you need to get through to pass. So I can help you prepare and pass. If you homeschool, I have a great homeschool math curriculum that you might be interested in. And if you don't have any math notes, well, you need to start uh, immediately correcting that. Okay? I've been teaching math for decades. Those students who take great math notes almost always do excellent in mathematics. You can't um, be successful in math without taking great math notes. But don't panic. You can use my math notes. I'm going to leave a link to my math notes um, in the description of this video as well. So you can use those to study from, but you really need to start taking your own notes. All right, so I'm going to get into uh, the, the steps to solve this radical equation. I'm going to um, explain um, some things, but I'm going to I'm going to kind of just do it in a quick way. All right, if you need more help with any of this stuff, I'm going to give you a couple of suggestions. One, you could check out additional videos in my like Algebra Two, Algebra and Algebra Two, uh, and Precalculus. Uh, playlist on my YouTube channel, or you might want to consider taking like my Algebra 2, um, or Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, or Pre-Calculus course if you really, really want to uh, learn how to do these type of equations. But let's get into it. I'm going to go ahead and just start explaining the steps here, okay? All right, so here we go. So when you're um, solving a radical equation, okay, what you need to do is isolate the radical. Now, we have two, radical, uh, two radicals here. Let me just show you something real quick. If I had the square root of x plus 1 equals 7, okay, uh, what you want to do is get this radical all by itself. Okay, so I could do that by moving this 1 to the other side so I can get the square root of x is equal to 6. Now, at this stage, what you want to do is square both sides. Okay, that's what we want to do. However, if you look at this, uh, this is easy because I have one radical to isolate, then I could square both sides. But in this situation, I got two radicals. So this is going to require us to do a lot more uh, work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to move this radical over to the right-hand side. That gives me this ex uh, expression right here. Okay. So I'm doing that because in this type of problem, and you should have learned this, in your class, but if you're learning this for the first time, when you have two radicals like this, you're, we're going to have to do, we're going to have to square this a couple times in this equation. So right here, at this point, I'm like, all right, what do I need to do? Well, let's go ahead and square both sides. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be doing right here. Now, the result of doing this, okay, at this point, when I square the square root of 5n plus 6, I, I'm left with 5n plus 6. So that's pretty good. I got rid of that square root there. But over here, I got this expression 2 minus the square root of 3m plus 4. I got to square that. 
And when you do that, you you end up with this. Okay. Now you're like, okay, how did you go from here to here? Well, let's take a look at what this looks like here, right? So 2 minus the square root of 3m plus 4 squared is that thing times that thing squared, right? In other words, you're multiplying by itself. Um, that's what it means to square. So when you do this, you need to be thinking about the FOIL method, all right? The first, outer, inner, last method to uh, multiply binomials. That's what we're doing here. So if you're doing this problem, you're like, oh, okay, I was confused about this part. But anytime, you know, you're, you're like, see what I'm doing, you're like, understand, try to pause the video and see if you can continue on uh, the solution by yourself. But that's what you need to do here to figure this out. You need to go ahead and treat this as two binomials and use the FOIL method. And you can see my work here. So the uh, two times two is, of course, four. And then we have this times uh, this. You could just see it's going to be negative. Uh, 2 times the square root of 3m plus 4, and then we have another negative 2 times the square root of 3m plus 4, and then finally this times this will be just 3m plus 4. Now, if you're not understanding this, if you're like a little confused here, you need to review the FOIL method, how to multiply uh, binomials, and of course, I got a ton of videos on that in my uh, uh, pre-algebra and algebra uh, uh, playlist on my YouTube channel, okay? But, you know, if you need to, pause the video and study how we went from here to here. Just don't take my word for it. Now, of course, I can combine like terms. This is a negative 2 square root of 3m plus 4 and another negative 2 uh, square root of uh, 3m plus 4. That adds up to negative 4 square root of 3m uh, plus 4. So before you rush off, before we, you know, go to the next step, if you really want to learn this, make sure you can do this and simplify to that step, okay, by using a FOIL technique. All right, so this is where we're at right now, okay? Of course, I'm showing you the work to get there, but we're only getting warmed up. So you're like, wow, so exciting. This is so much more fun, so much more enjoyment here to this problem. Let's continue to move forward. All right, so here's where we're at, okay? So we had this 5m. This is the result of squaring both sides. We had a 5m plus 4 equals 4 minus uh, 4 times the square root of 3m plus 4 plus uh, 3m plus 4. So this is where we're picking up the problem. Now, I'm still, you know, looking at this. I'm like, I still have this radical with this variable underneath this. So I'm going to have to isolate this thing. So we're going to have to do a bunch of other stuff here. So uh, first things first, I have a 4 and 4. That would be 8. And then I have 3m here. And then here is my negative 4 square root of 3m plus 4. I'll write that over there. So I got, um, yeah, I can kind of clean this up by, um, you know, combining like terms. But really what I want to do is isolate the radical, okay? I'm kind of going back to that main concept. We want to isolate this part on one side of the equation, okay? So I can move all of this stuff, okay? Of course, I'm, uh, we're really talking about this stuff. I can move this over to this side, and I'll get this part of the equation isolated. And that is what I've done right here. Okay, I move that 8 over to both sides. I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. I get negative 2. And I'm going to subtract 3m from both sides. I get 2m. Now, if you don't understand this, you definitely, this problem is, you know, too challenging for you at this moment. doesn't mean that you won't be able to understand this, but you're going to have to work your way up to this. So just go ahead and study the steps and make sure you see uh, what I have done. Okay, so here we go. We have 2m minus 2 is equal to negative 4 times the square root of 3m plus 4. So this is looking pretty good now. Okay, now I got this problem down to 1 radical. So when I square root, I'm sorry, when I square both sides, I can get rid of that radical. We're finally getting to the point where we can solve this. But just let's notice something here. Okay, here I have 2, I have 2, 4, okay, of course has a factor of 2 in it. So I could divide every term in this equation by 2, and that will just simplify this as m minus 1 uh, is equal to a negative 2 times the square root of 3m plus 4. Okay, so uh, anytime you have an opportunity to simplify, all right, by just um, factoring out a number or dividing both sides of the equation by that number, that's perfectly fine. Matter of fact, that's the way you should do things in algebra. So instead of dealing with this, let's just simplify the numbers and deal with this. Okay, all right, so. Uh, we're looking pretty good, and uh, at this point, you're like, all right, I got this square root, okay? Uh, I got this negative 2 times the square root, so let's go ahead and now square uh, both sides of the equation, because i got to get rid of this radical, okay? And when I do that, then I can kind of take this further. 
All right, so m minus 1 uh, squared. All right, so of course I'm writing it right here, m minus 1 squared. When I square that, again, that's just the FOIL technique, m minus 1 times m minus 1. You get m squared minus 2m plus 1. And then right here, on this side of the equation, I'm going to square that. I can actually distribute this, this power to the inside. So in other words, there's this property of exponents, a to the m times a to the n. We could just call this like to an outside exponent c is equal to a to the m times c times a to the n times c. But whether you did this using the uh, FOIL technique or any other technique or using the property of exponents, you can see here I distributed this 2 to this negative 2 and this uh, outside uh, exponent 2 to my 3m, square root of 3m plus 4. So negative 2 uh, squared is positive 4. And then here, when I square this uh, square root, of 3m plus 4, I'm left with 3m plus 4. So either way, whether you use this principle, um, you should got uh, you should have been able to go from here to here. Now again, if your algebra skills aren't up to speed, where you're confused about this, well, you got to work on all that. All right, so let's take a look at the situation. Finally, at this point, um, I have gotten rid of all the radicals, and now this is what? Well, it's a quadratic equation. So let's go ahead and solve this quadratic equation. But let's just talk about something here real quick, okay? I'm going to solve this quadratic equation, but uh, there's one thing that we got to really keep in mind, okay? Because we're squaring uh, both sides of the equation, okay, and there's variables involved, this is a hugely important thing where we're talking about radical equations. You can introduce something called extraneous roots, okay? Extraneous roots. We're going to talk about that more in a second, but just be aware that uh, you know uh, we're going to be um, having to evaluate to determine whether we introduced any extraneous roots because we've been squaring the both sides of the equation twice, and that could introduce these extraneous roots. Again, an element, a layer of understanding how to solve more challenging radical equations. But let's go ahead and focus now on how to solve this quadratic equation. So let's break it down here. I have m squared minus 2m plus 1 is equal to 4m, 4 times 3m plus 4. Here I can just use the distributive property. So I'll use it with 12m plus 16. I have m squared minus 2m plus 1. Let's set everything equal to 0. So I'm moving that 12m over, that's 16 over. You can just see the work here. And then this guy right here, this trinomial, is factorable. Okay, so I could factor m squared minus 14m uh, minus 15 as m minus 15 times m plus 1. Now, if you don't know how I went from here to here, you're going to have to review factoring. So again, multiple skills um, in this problem. This is, uh, you know, fairly fairly challenging algebra. Okay, so if you find this problem a little bit, maybe not all super difficult, but just, man, there's a lot of steps. Well, then you're right on track because there is a lot of steps. Okay, so here... I can use a zero product property, m, um, m, uh, m minus 15 times m plus 1 is equal to zero, so we can set that factor equal to zero, m minus 15 is equal to zero, solve for m, I get m is equal to 15, and m plus 1, I can set that equal to zero, and I get m is equal to negative 1. So here are my two solutions. Now these two uh, solutions are the solutions to this quadratic equation, okay? So these solutions are, in fact, the answers to this problem. However, these are only potential solutions in the original equation, okay? So this is why I'm saying you must check uh, these uh, answers into the original equation, okay? And when we do that, we're going to see that only m is equal to negative 1 works, all right? So here is the original equation. These right here, we may have, both might work. But one or both might may be extraneous. In this case, uh, 15 is extraneous. So when we go ahead and plug in 15, replace m uh, uh, for 15 for m, and plug this in, we get the square root of 81. And over here, we get the square root of 49. Now, although we're dealing with plus or minus, we're going to end it with 9 uh, plus 7, and that is going to not be equal to 2. So that is a problem, okay? So we're going to have to throw that out. But here, when we have m is equal to negative 1, you can see uh, when I plug in negative 1 for m, uh, I'm going to get the square root of 1. And when I get the, when I plug in negative 1 for m here, I'm also going to get the square root of 1. So square root 1 plus square root 1 will give me that 2, okay? And this is the solution. 
Wow. Okay. So if you got this right, then I must go ahead and give you an awesome 1984 Mohawk, an A plus 1,000%. I'm going to give you multiple stars because that's pretty awesome. Matter of fact, if you were in my class, I would just say, go home. I'll see you next year. Great job. I'll uh, go ahead and put your A-plus into the system. I don't know what you're doing. You must be watching that guy on YouTube. But if you were able to do this problem confidently, everything, you, and you just knew how to manage it and you got this down, then that is uh, pretty, uh, you know, that's pretty impressive. Let's just say that much, okay? Now, but, but this type of problem, although I'm saying – that 10%, you know, would probably be able to solve this when I, you know, kind of gave this uh, problem to them. Eh, who knows? I mean, I, these are just estimations. Of course, I've been teaching math for decades, so this is what my gut's telling me. But if, you know, if you didn't get this right, but if you understood a lot of it, that's good. But the whole idea behind this video is to learn something, okay, to improve, all right, and look at what areas of this problem, what aspects of it you don't understand so you can learn this. But you, you know, don't feel like you... Um, you don't have to know how to do this problem. Anyone, again, is at the Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus level, uh, you need to know how to do problems like this, okay? All right, so if this video was helpful in some small, tiny way, go ahead and please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus uh, math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. Uh, so I make all this content uh, for you. My goal always is, tr is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. I know it gets difficult, you know, to uh, understand some of these abstract concepts. So that's why I try to just explain things in a way that most people can understand. At least that's my objective. Okay. So if you like my um, content, stick around because I'm going to be posting new stuff in the future as well. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.